Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about rates of reaction. The rate of a chemical reaction tells us how fast the reactants are being turned into products. And this is important to know for many reasons. For example, in industry, you need to know the rate of your reaction in order to know if you can make your product quickly and if you can make a profit. And also we need to know how to speed up the rate in order to make more profit. So the rate is something that is very important to know when you're doing a reaction. You need to know if it's gonna take years to complete or if it will be finished in seconds. And we can calculate the rate in one of two ways. Either how quickly the products are made or how quickly the reactants are used up. So here the top equation gives us the rate as being the amount of reactant used divided by the time taken. And this bottom equation gives the rate as the amount of product formed divided by the time taken. So we need to be able to measure the amount of either the reactant used or the amount of the product formed. And we need to time the reaction in order to find the rate. So here are two ways that we can measure the amount of reactant or product. Here we have our reaction on the left hand side here in this diagram. We have our reaction happening in a conical flask and bubbles are being given off here, these small little bubbles, and it's sitting on a scale which can read or measure its mass. And the mass of this flask and its contents is going to change over time because these bubbles are going to rise and they're going to escape through this cotton wool at the top of the conical flask. So the mass is going to decrease over time. And we can measure the loss in mass at regular time intervals and we can plot a graph of the loss in mass versus time. And I'll show you that graph in a minute. Or if you look at the right hand side diagram, we can measure the amount of gas which is produced because this gas is a product of the reaction and it's going to travel up here and collect in this gas syringe. And we can measure the volume of gas that is produced by this reaction. So we can measure the volume of gas given off at regular time intervals and then we can plot a graph of volume of gas produced versus time. And I'll show you that in a moment as well. So here's a graph. This graph shows the loss of mass of the reactants over time. And you can see from the shape of the curve that the rate is changing over time. The rate is not constant. You can see from the steepness of the graph that the rate initially is faster than the rate later on. In fact, the rate of reaction right at the end is zero. It's completely flat, this line, it's horizontal. So the steepness of the line can tell you a lot about the rate. Here the rate is faster and as we go further along in time, the rate decreases and you can see the gradient of this line becoming less steep showing us that the rate has decreased. So that's one way we can look at these graphs and gain some information just by looking at the steepness of the graph at different points. We can also use these graphs to calculate the actual rate of reaction using the gradient. So this graph shows the volume of gas produced this time over time. And the volume of gas produced is measured in centimeters cubed and the time taken is measured in seconds. And there's two ways we can calculate the rate of reaction. The first way is calculating the average rate of reaction. So if we were to calculate the average rate of reaction for the first five seconds, we would go up from five, we would go across, and we would see that seven centimeters cubed of gas 
is produced in five seconds. So to find the rate, or I should say the average rate, we need to divide seven centimeters cubed by five seconds. And that will give us a rate of 1.4 centimeters cubed per second. And that will be the average rate of reaction over the first five seconds. It's the average because this line is not completely straight. So this, this what we have worked out here, is not a proper gradient, but it is the average rate. Now the next thing we can do is we can calculate the rate at any particular time. And in order to do that, we need to find the gradient of the graph at that time. Now in the beginning, that's easy because the graph is more or less, the curve is more or less a straight line here. So all you need to do is find the change in the y-axis. So let's say we pick this point here and the origin, and we want to find the gradient of this point of the graph. We trace down, we trace across, and then we divide in order to get the rate, we divide the change in the y-axis by the change in the x-axis. So that's 3 divided by 2. And that gives us a rate of 1.5 centimeters cubed per second. So that's easy because that bit of the graph is quite straight. But what if you have a more curved part of this line? How do you find the gradient of this curved bit? Let me show you. What you need to do in this case is you need to draw a tangent like this. So here I've drawn a tangent to the line at five seconds. So at five seconds, you draw a tangent to the line and you can use the gradient of the tangent to give you the rate at that point in time. So you would have to form a triangle and then you have your change in y and you divide that by the change in x. So let's calculate the rate at this point in the curve. So here the change in y, it starts around five and a half and it goes to around seven and a half. So the change here is two. And in the x-axis it's from six to around two and a half. So that change is around 3.5. So the rate at five seconds at that point in the reaction is 2 divided by 3.5, which equals 0 0.57 centimeters cubed per second. So there's two ways of calculating the rate. There's the average rate, and then there's a precise rate of reaction at a given time, in which case you may need to draw a tangent if it's curved at that point. Okay, so that was all about how to calculate a rate of reaction. I will upload another video about collision theory and about the factors that affect the rate of reaction. And that video will take a closer look at the process of chemical reactions and what factors affect them. But this video was just about how to calculate rate of reaction. So I hope it helped. Make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.